Okay, the question here. I'm a little lost. Why should we use delay elements? You don't have to use delay elements. I have used it here because I want to simulate things appearing over time. If I don't have the delay elements, all the elements show up in one shot, which is not ideal, right? For for learning purposes, it's no different from uh, any other flux in terms of what you're writing. But I want you to get the idea that these are items that are happening over time. And I want you to think of this as different from the the stream operations that you do on collections. Because without the delay elements, it looks exactly the same like collection streams, right? I wanted to establish that distinction. So just for the sake of an example, I did this. But yes, thank you for answering that question. If I would want to store the result of a flux, should I place it on a list or should I place it on, for example, flux of a string? Depends on where you want to store it. If you want to store it in the database, you will have to put it on a subscribe, right? When a subscribe happens, get that element and then do things that would save it to the database. So yeah, that would that's how we would do it. If you really need to block, then you just use the block to get there, but I don't think I don't think it's necessary to block most of the times. So you would just call it on the subscribe so that you're not blocking it. You're just doing the right thing whenever the thing that you need is ready. Okay. So speaking of, I had this one item here, which was which we said we're gonna get back to when we learned about operators. I want to get back to that thing now. Okay, which is this one. Okay. I said get the value from an unresponsive flux into a string list, but give up after five seconds. Okay, how do you do this? Well, here is an unresponsive flux, reactive sources dot unresponsive flux. Well, now we know collect list, right? Collect list is going to give us a mono of a list. And now I can use the same mechanism to block the mono. We now have this information, okay? So now I can say list of string list equals this thing, but with the block. Okay. So basically I switched it to a mono, but I'm doing a collect list, which is going to give me a mono and I'm blocking on that mono just for the sake of complete. I just remembered that. So thought I'd add it there. All right, so with this, I'm going to almost, we're, we're almost there. One last thing that I want to show you, which is Spring Boot. Okay, we've learned so much about, you know, fluxes and monos. How does it fit into Spring Boot? What does the creation of a new Spring Boot project look like with fluxes and monos and how does it work?